I am ranked number one. One! That means I'm the best. Mick Hennessy said, out of respect for Sky, he's going to keep this short. This is in reply to Eddie Hearn and their involvement in the Klitschko versus Fury event. Mick Hennessy said, you had no involvement whatsoever with the rescheduled November event in Dusseldorf. You are not Sky and you are not Sky's agent. You will not party to any of our contract negotiations, calls or correspondence with Sky. And you will not party to our agreement. It is interesting that your original claim of brokering and arranging our deal with Sky, you have now conceded that you have only negotiated your splits. It's embarrassing that you have raised this issue at all. Looks like Eddie's coming a bit out of his wheelhouse. You know, I don't know if he thought he was financially entitled to some of um, Hennessy Sports' split. Or if he just wanted to say, yeah, look, I broke the heavyweight champion title fight or something like that, you know. Because it wouldn't just be about money. It's just having that on your portfolio. You know, look, I'm brokering heavyweight title fights. World heavyweight title fights. I'm sure they'll reply. Eddie always has a lot to say for himself. Tyson Fury will be attending the BBC Sports Personality of the Year Award. And Mick Hennessy is calling for people to vote. So if that's what you want to do, that's what you should do. Yeah, well, you know, I made that long video saying, because he said he wasn't going to attend. I said, no, you have to attend. You can't win that title and not attend. Let them protest against you, but show your face. Show that you was there. Don't just walk away. Don't roll the dice and walk away from your result. You know what I'm saying? And Peter Fury, he chimed in and said, Mick Hennessy did a fabulous job. A humble man. No one is taking his achievements. That's obviously relating to Eddie Hearn's claim that he had more to do with the negotiation and the Klitschko Fury fight than what he did. I mean, if Eddie's that big, why did he let Mick Hennessy outbid him for the Eubank Blackwell fight? So Mick Hennessy really is in the big time now. He is in the big time. He just needs a contract with somebody who can um, televise his fights for his fighters, I guess. That's, that would be the next level for him, but he has to develop a decent stable. Nick Blackwell and Fury isn't enough. And he admits if it wasn't for Tyson Fury, he'd be finished as a promoter. He comes out and says it himself. But he has a decent stable. You know, he's got Lee Haskins, interim IBF bantamweight champion. He's got Yusef Safa, an unbeaten prospect to bantamweight, who's quite decent from what I saw. He's got all the Furies, Young Fury, Huey Fury, and Tyson Fury, world champion. Bob Adjazaf, a light heavyweight. He's not bad. He's not bad. Kid Galahad is under suspension, obviously. Nick Blackwell, British champion. And Lenny Dawes, who just, um... Lenny, Lenny's okay. Len, Lenny's okay. He lost the other day, actually. But, you know. The Channel 5 deal he has is just not frequent enough. Like, we don't see enough cards. And maybe Channel 5 have to sign to another promoter. Like Goodwin. Sign, sign Goodwin and Hennessy. Sign both of them. Goodwin operates the York Hall. In London, Hennessy will go out of London a little more to the north of the country. That'd be a little good combination there. I know. Get your thinking caps on, man. Go get your thinking caps on. I think Goodwin Inc. to deal with Boxing News, so they'll be showing some of their content on their website. I'm not sure if it'll be going onto YouTube because for some reason Goodwin promotions do not upload onto YouTube. I think he sells DVDs, so those who attended can get a copy but he doesn't upload to YouTube which is a bit crazy in itself he doesn't have to upload the whole card but upload some of it and let us know you're here everybody's on YouTube he's also going to be supplying the undercard for David Hay versus Mark DeMori at the O2 Arena David Hay is throwing his hat in as a promoter although that won't be Hay's first um, foray into promotions alongside Adam Booth they started Haymaker Promotions. They had Derry Matthews, Ryan Rhodes, the trainer Dave Caldwell. He was part of the organization. George Groves was on there. David Price was on there for a little while. At the start of his career, at least. Until he went to Frank Warren and then the Sowlands. George Groves, he started there, I believe. He was managed by... Haymaker Promotions, but he was inking promotional deals with Frank Warren on his Queensbury outfit and Box Nation. And he's been with Sky, and now he's with the Salons. 
Nicholas Walters is open to fighting anyone, he says, but he feels WBO world featherweight champion Vasil Lomachenko is purposely avoiding him. We all know Walters lost his title on the scales last time out to Miguel Mariaga, a 12-round decision victory, and he's taken on Jason Souza at super featherweight in a 10-rounder. Walters is also interesting in facing off against lightweight Uriacus Gamboa and states he is willing to move to higher weights. Next year, anything is possible. I'm looking to fight the big names, Gamboa, anyone. Anything is possible, he said. Vasil Lomachenko is not looking in my direction, but I'm here. I'm ready to fight. I'm not hiding from nobody. I'm a crew fighter. I believe if I'm going to be the best, I have to fight the best. I'm not even concerned about fighting at heavier weights. I'm inspiring guys at 140 to 145 pounds. Walters then turned his attention to Sosa, his opponent, and questioned the New Jersey native's resolve. He says, I'm a descendant of the gladiators. I come to fight, he said. I'm not sure if the fight is going to go past four rounds. It depends if Sosa comes to fight. I'm sorry, but Sosa is not going to do to me what I did to Nonito Denier or Vic Darchinian. I'm a lion. I don't know if Sosa is a lion. People are expecting a big fight, and I'm going to give them a big fight. The Axeman is very dangerous. He is always prepared for a war. <laughs> Gamboa is actually on the bill that takes place in New York. The main event is Bryant Jennings versus Lewis King Kong Hartis from Cuba. Uneski Gonzalez, we saw giving Gene Pascal all the work he needed. He's back. I believe he is fighting Vasilev Shabransky. He's 14 and 0 with 12 KOs. It's a 10 rounder. That looks like a good bout. I don't know anything about the opponent, but he's got rid of 12 men early. <laughs> Gabriel Sada takes on Joshua Clotty, who's always value for money. Apart from the Pacquiao fight, where it looked like he could have laced up Pacquiao a little more than he did, but he just didn't. He just wouldn't pull the trigger. He was gun shy. But the fight is taking place at 160. And Gabe Rosado was towering above Clotty. So, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. That one there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird, man. You know, you guys be calling out all these black racist YouTube channels recently. Oh, you're not real boxing fans. You're not this, you're not that. You're not this, 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 that. And none of you have touched on this Walters Lomachenko situation. Even though Walters lost the title on the scales, he was still the number one featherweight on any reputable ratings page. Ring Magazine, FightNews.com. But yet, you know, didn't hear a peep from you. Didn't hear a peep. That's because the fighters that you're fanboys of, you're just trying to protect. And because you are so racist, what you've done was good tactics. You attacked first. You attacked other channels of being racist to deflect from how racist you are. You guys have started this shit, but let's look at it objectively. What you think is right that Lomachenko's manager said, well, since he hasn't got a belt, we don't need him. What, you think that's right? You guys just hoping the story will just... Come out of the public eye and never be brought back up again. That's for you, you're the fuck boys. Yeah, I said it. He didn't lose his title in the ring. And you want to challenge me about real boxing fan? Yeah? Well, how about if you don't lose your title in the ring and you're willing to face off against anyone to prove you're the top man, you're supposed to fight that guy and that's a boxing tradition. I won't give you the examples because if you don't know, you're not real boxing fans. You ain't the real boxing fans. How about that? Alexander Yusek has had nine fights and he is the mandatory for the WBO cruiserweight title against Glowashki. Now, Mr. James Addy Bashir, a contributor to this channel, has just put out a video with Bayloric TV and they want to beat Evander Holyfield's record. Holyfield won the cruiserweight title in 12 fights. Now, let's consider this is not a flyweight or a bantamweight title where... The fighters mature a lot younger. This is a division right next to the heavyweight division. Yeah. And it was filled with tough contenders at this time here. He won it in 12 fights. Holyfield actually started as a light heavyweight. As a pro. And as an Olympian. 
I went through Alexander's box rec, pro box rec, and there's no names there. Them names are not noticeable. None of them have did anything. They have none of them have challenged for any major belts or anything. Holyfield took on Lionel Barham. That was a really tough debut. Now, you know, that's what the magazine was saying. The boxing news was saying. I remember it visibly. They said, this is very, very, very tough to take on as a debut. And it was a really tough fight. Very tough fight. Eric Rimbush, apparently, he was tough too. You know, I saw the Mark Rivera fight on ITV. He battered him. That's when he was still at light heavy. He took on Tyrone Booz and won an eight rounder. Tyrone Booz went on to become a WBO cruiserweight champion. Very tough guy. He beat Derek Angle in the UK for the cruiserweight title. I remember it very well. Knocked him out. Anthony Davis. Very tough. It's, it's like Anthony Davis was in with all the tough guys. He actually rocked Holyfield before Holyfield got him out of there. Davis fought Bash Alley, Elijah Tillery, Jesse Burnett, Carlos De Leon. All tough guys. All tough guys. Yeah? Now, he was just a journeyman, but he was very tough. Tougher than any of the guys that Usyk has taken on. He fought Chisan Namuti, a former cruiserweight challenger himself, who was actually in one of the best cruiserweight fights ever against Leroy Murphy. It was a rocky film type finish go type it in youtube if you don't believe me and if you have, don't have the patience to watch the whole fight which you should do it's a really good fight it's so exciting i don't think it went the whole 15 it went into the late rounds go watch the finish chisana muti was a good good fighter a world title challenger jesse shelby was tough these are the guys hollyfield fought in his first 10 fights and the only reason they gave him such tough of and the only reason they gave him such tough opposition is because Benton and Lou Duva couldn't hold him. He was just so talented. He was just too advanced to put in with the mediocre type of opponents we see young fighters going in with. He was just too advanced. He was just so matured. So, yes, Usyk might beat the record, but so what? <laughs> so what? So what? You know? To beat the record, you've got to unify all the titles in the short space that Holyfield did it as well. I mean, by 1988, he won the belt in 86. July 86. Against Dwight Muhammad Cowie. Not Glashki. Dwight Muhammad Cowie. Right? For the WBA belt. No, no WBO belt against Glashki. Yeah? And by 88, he had all the belts. He had all of the belts. The Cowie bout was a 15-rounder. One of the last 15-rounders, actually, of that era. And it's one of my favorite all-time fights. One of my favorites. Yeah? Like, there's a case for me that, Holy, that Holyfield didn't win the fight. There, there's definitely that case that he didn't win it. But that fight there, man. Holyfield was burning muscle tissue. They had to rush him into hospital. He put so much effort into that fight. He beat Henry Tillman, Olympic gold medalist. Beat the crap out of him. From the jump, he just beat he just beat Henry Tillman up. I remember one of the combinations, it could have been the finishing one, where he punched Spittle out of his mouth, but he was like, damn, man, Holyfield is a bad boy. <laughs> when he had that flat top, before he was bald, when he had the flat top, man. Ricky Parkey, he took the IBF belt from Ricky Parkey in free, and Ricky was good. Ricky was good. Ricky held a KO record over Broderick Mason in about seven seconds, and he was good. And Ricky had this overhand right punch. He'd throw it out of your peripheral. Just a looping overhand right. And he used to catch people with it. He caught Holyfield with it as well. <laughs> but Holyfield ate it. Holyfield ate it up, man. When Holyfield got to him free, he beat the crap out of Ricky. He beat Ozzy Ocasio. Knocked him out. Actually stopped him. And Ozzy was good. He was a former cruiserweight champion himself. Ozzy, he was good. He fought Larry Holmes for the heavyweight title. He took Lennox Lewis the distance. A fat Ocasio. These were the guys that Holyfield was fighting. Slick Puerto Rican, Ozzy Ocasio. He ground him down in the late rounds, but Ocasio was giving him rounds and giving him trouble. Holyfield couldn't get to him like that. It was, it was a difficult fight. Not in terms of him getting hit by power punches, but the slickness, the slickness. He fought Cowie again. This time he ended it early. There were rumors that alleged that Dwight was on some substances and he wasn't right, but he got beaten up. He got beaten up. Carlos De Leon, all three belts. And De Leon was a good champion. Very good champion. Carlos Sugar De Leon, another Puerto Rican. 
Rancis Barthelemy, he won the IBF lightweight championship against Denis Shafikov. Barthelemy won the early rounds. Shafikov came into it and he was even giving him some tough moments in the early rounds, you know. But after Barthelemy cut Shafikov, he was able to box his way out. And now he's a two-time world champion. Barthelemy likes to keep his shoulder underneath his chin and keep his side on so you can't get a clean shot. Southpaw. Shafikov was a southpaw too. Barthelemy's uppercuts and jab and better punch variety won the night and won him the title. 